Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth. It's good to have you. Please consider subscribing and turning on your post notification bell if you are a crafter or just enjoy crafting videos. My goal at the moment is to have 2,000 of you lovely people subscribe to my channel. So please help me to achieve my goal so I can continue to bring you more crafting videos. Today I'm going to be showing you how I add an image onto a very plain bag panel before construction. It's just so adorable. I love it. And if you would like to see how I do this, stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so today I'm going to be putting an image on this fabric here and this is a bag panel so I'm going to be making a bag and I just thought it'd be nice to have because it's quite a big plain space to have an image on there so I'm using this uh, black denim and I will be bringing out a video to show you how I create the bag but for now I just wanted to talk you through how I am going to put the image on my uh, panel here. So I'm going to be using fiber print. So it's a type of uh, printable vinyl. Okay, and I'm going to be using my inkjet uh, printer. So the actual material, which I will link where I got the material from, it says it there, it's from YOLO Creative here in the UK. But the vinyl is, you might not be able to see it, it's got a slight uh, texture on it. So it's a flock type of material and I just thought it'd be nice to go on a bag. So this is what I'm going to be using. I'm now going to take you to Cricut Design Space to show you how I set up my file. Okay, so I'm in Cricut Design Space and I already have my file set up, but I just want to show you how I bring in my um, image. So my image is from Creative Fabrica. I will link the image, it's beautiful. So I've already got the image here but I want to show you how I actually bring the file in. So I'm gonna go into upload. So browse, and it's in my downloads. And it is here, double click. And I want to bring in the PNG because it won't have a background. So double click on that. And then I, always click complex continue here is my image and you can see the checkered background that means it doesn't have a background then I'm going to apply and continue it's a print then cut image so I'm going to select print then cut upload and then here's the image here, it's the same as that one. So I'm just gonna click on that one and then add to canvas. So here's my image. We can see a warning sign here. It is too big, so you would have to resize it. So let me just resize it for now. Let's just say five inches, hit return, and we can see the warning sign is off. So that is how you would bring in your image into Cricut Design Space. Right, I'm going to delete that because I don't want that. I've already got my file set up. So I've already got my file set up here and it's grouped. I'm just gonna ungroup it for now. So it's ungrouped. But what I want to do with this, um, image now is I need to uh, flatten it. I'm going to group it again actually. don't think it's necessary but 
I've grouped it and I've got my logo because I don't want to waste my material. Uh, for some strange reason, Cricut Design Space doesn't allow you to print a, a, just a tiny image now, which it used to allow you to do, but it doesn't now. So I want to use up as much of my material as possible. So here is my image. It is a print then cut and then I need to flatten it. Now it's a flattened image. I can now send it to my Cricut. So I'm gonna click make it. I'm going to just adjust my um, size of my paper here. So it's going on A4. Okay, so A4 paper. Right. And now I'm going to hit continue, which is off screen. You can't really see it, but it's at the bottom here. We don't need to mirror this. So hit continue. And then I want to send it to my printer. Right, I'm using the HP MV 6400. Okay, that's what I'm using. I want my bleed on so I'm leaving my bleed on and then I need to use the system dialog and then press print right so system dialog is here so here I've got a4 paper and then I need to select the media quality okay so I'm going to select my paper type so my paper type I'm going to select plain and then for the quality I want it to be best quality okay and then I'm going to send it to the printer okay so I'm at my printer I'm just going to remove the paper that's already in there so it doesn't interfere with my printing and then I'm going to put my material in now so here is my uh, flock vinyl and I'm going to put the textured side, so the flock side, I'm going to put it face down into my printer. Just making sure you've got a kind of shiny side, so that shiny side is up, your flock side facing down, so the textured side facing down. You need to check the feed of your printer to know which way to put your material in. But mine is flock side down. And then just getting ready for it to print. So here is the image. I think it looks really, really cute. Very pastel-y. I'm hoping my logo's cut out nicely, but here is the image. I now have to leave this to dry for at least 30 minutes. So I'm just going to leave that to dry and then we'll take you to the Cricut to cut it. Okay, so we are now at the Cricut. I've left my image for uh, about 40, 40 to 50 minutes and I've put it on my mat. Um, my mat is not very sticky at the moment, so I've just put some uh, masking tape around it. And now we are ready to cut our image. So I'm cutting this on everyday iron-on and I'm using the default setting, but I probably will do two passes for this material. Okay, so that is the first pass. I'm just going to check to see if um, it needs another pass. So I'm just gonna pick one of the corners. Apologies that you can't see it. 
So I'm going to do another pass because it didn't cut all the way through. And so I'm not unloading the mat, I'm just going to press cut again. So it's just finished the second pass and I can see that it's cut all the way through so I'm just going to unload the mat. Okay, so I'm just going to take it off the mat. My mat is lost, it's sticky, I need a new one. Okay, so I'm not going to be using these two little images here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out the larger owl and one of my uh, labels here. Okay, so I'm just gonna be using this one and that one. So let's weed. I think I'm gonna weed this one after. I think this is gonna be more of a challenge. So I'm gonna weed this big guy first and it's just so adorable. Super cute. I'm hoping it's cut all the way through, I did check. And I hope it hasn't cut the back end paper. Some of it's not cut all the way through, but I'll just hold it with my finger. It's all these smaller elements, I think, that is a bit more of a challenge to cut. Let's weed this one. I think this is going to be a bit of a nightmare to weed. I'm just going to use my scraper just to kind of make sure that it's down. It feels really nice though, the flock. It's really soft. It's got a kind of velvety suede kind of texture. Okay, so I managed to weed this one. I'm not gonna be pressing this one today because I would like to press this on some uh, vinyl or leatherette. So I'm just gonna push that to the side, but I will be putting the, um, the transfer tape, it's like a mask, over the image. So I've got some, some of the transfer sheet here. So I'm just gonna peel it off the back end and get a grip of it. This is always so tricky. Here we go. Right, I'm hoping it sticks really well because it is kind of a a kind of furry type of texture. So I'm just bowing the transfer tape and dropping it down in the middle and then letting it fall to the sides like that. And then I'm going to use my scraper just so that it's sticking to the tape. Okay, stuck to my table now, or my mat. <laughs> oh, 
Well, it's very sticky on my mat, but let's see how it kind of transfers, if it's a nice and easy process. I mean, it's kind of, hmm, let's see anyway. So I can see from the back that um, it's cut a little bit into my the back end of this, but I'm just going to try my best to remove it. Hopefully it comes off smoothly. Oh, it's super sticky. Oh my goodness. Let's try this way. Okay, so it's not lifting it like I wanted it to. Let's see if I can just grab some here and then maybe start to roll it away. That's most of it off. All right, let's have a look at it. Oh, it's kind of not sticking as well as I want it to. But, right, let's just get this off. Okay, that's what it's looking like at the moment on there. I mean, it's not sticking as well. See, I've just got one of these little elements have just fallen off. So I can put that back right here. I feel like this one's back in is still on. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to, I think this would be better if it was just, I mean, I don't have to really put these little elements, but I do, I do want to put them on because I think it's part of the image and I've already lost some from this side but if it was just one piece it would be easier for you to just you wouldn't even have to use this uh, mask you could just pick up the image and then put it on your um, fabric or whatever your t-shirt and it would be easier to kind of transfer that way but nevertheless I'm going to take you to the heat press now okay so I am at the press now and I have heated up my heat press to 165. It's supposed to be 165 for 17 seconds. But if you've seen this heat press before, you will know that the heat fluctuates. So I use a temperature gun to test. It's saying 166, but it gives different readings depending on where you kind of aim the temperature gun at. So now it's saying 173. So I'm just gonna go with it because on here it's saying 162. So hopefully that will be okay. So I need to center my image make sure I have it the right way up so my bag panel is going to be this way and I've already pressed my my panel already okay right I'm going to remove the image actually I might do this on a more flat surface for now Right, I'm going to take off the backing sheet because I did return the backing sheet to this. And I went over it again with a squeegee, with a softer side. So I'm going to now just center this. I mean, it's coming off this transfer, but 
I'm going to try and put this little element back that came off. Okay, let me see if I like where it is. I'm just going to measure how far it is from the edge. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I think it's okay. It's roughly in the middle. I mean, I could move it over a little bit more. I just don't want to mess with it too much. I'll move it slightly over. Okay, I think I'm happy with that as being in the middle. Yep, I'm okay with it like that. So I'm just going to just go over with my squeegee so I know it's flat. I don't want it to have any wrinkles. We're now ready to press. So I'm going to pop that on and I'm going to be using a Teflon sheet as well and I'm going to press it for 17 seconds just need to make sure that it's in the right location So I think this is a cold pill, so I'm going to wait for it to, to cool down. Before I peel off the tape. Okay, it's cooled down ever so slightly, so I'm going to take this off. It's on there, it's actually on there, but I'm going to just press it. Here's my insurance press. I'm going to press it again, just for, let's say, three seconds. Just three seconds. It is absolutely adorable and I can't wait to use it on my bag. So stay tuned for when I actually sew up this bag. Thanks for watching from me and the little owl. <laughs> Bye! If you found this video interesting or useful, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet done so and turn on your post notification bell and make sure you check all so you never miss an upload from me. Please feel free to interact with the comment section by leaving any comments, questions or any suggestions about any videos that I should do in the comment section below. You're also welcome to join our Facebook group, it's Craft Junkie Studio and I will leave the link in the description box below. And as always, don't have a good day. Have an amazing day. Till next time. Bye.